all right what's going on guys it's belton here uh back with a new video so there's two questions i'm asked uh, most often uh, and that is how do i build up money to get crafting at league start um and you know how can i get involved in what you're doing uh if i have a really low budget or a low tolerance for risk um or you know i don't have enough currency to ride out large rng samples so uh, we're going to be covering both those things in today's video and uh, commiserate with the community poll I left on my channel on YouTube. Uh, we will be covering things that are often overlooked and almost always profitable. Uh, that means from day one until the league's end. Uh, there's little to no RNG involved in pretty much all of these. Uh, and each one can be done in one to five minutes at most. And all of them are capable of producing multiple divines an hour. I spent quite a bit of time preparing this one. Uh, for you guys in an attempt to make it more concise and accessible. Uh, I hope that helps. Um, and I have about 350 to 500 more of these strategies cataloged um, if the format is well received and you guys like this. So let me know. Uh, with that preamble done though, let's get started with 15 and 15, baby. Uh, and that means 15 ways to make multiple divines in under 15 minutes each. Well, let's get fired off with number one. All right, so the first thing we're going to do here uh, is do three to one on brass domes. You'll see brass dome like any other unique uh, can be traded for three copies on corrupted uh, and give you a new version of that item. Brass dome is one of many unique items that has a uh, very big variance in its price due to the rolls. The biggest thing here being uh, the one to five roll of max res. Uh, a <clears throat> uh, a level one, sorry, a one max res roll is uh, about forty five to seventy five chaos right now in league. Uh, whereas a 5% roll is uh, 4 to 5 divines. Um, on top of that, obviously, sockets and links have factors as well. And these are going to change without the league. But this is something to take a look at. And uh, we'll go over the specifics when we're done with these crafts at the end of the video. Uh, so I can explain the tech as quickly as possible. So you can see here, we're going to go 3 to 1. And we get a 1%. 1, 2, 3. 2%. One percent, three percent, five percent, Four percent, three percent. Four divines, and these ones are three divines each. So <clears throat> that's something to take a look at. Uh, that same tech can be used for multiple uniques, but uh, we're going to. Uh, Focus on that one first. Uh, it's definitely a useful item, uh, and there's a huge, huge gap in these. Uh, definitely take into consideration for the market, but that is the first method number one. Uh, similar in that fashion, we're going to do the same thing with Venters. Method number two, uh, we're going to buy Venters. Uh, not, we can either buy, turn them with divination cards, find them, do not corrupt them. Typically ones with reduced rolls, and simply trade them three to one. Uh, reduced, reduced, reduced. And we'll get two new ones here. Venters obviously have had, in oh my god, look at that one. They have a huge range of variants on them, more than any other item in the game, in fact. Um, and you can see there, uh, we just took ones that were, you know, one chaos each. And uh, about one divine there. So we spent about six chaos, one divine. So that's method number two. Uh, method number three. This one's super, super easy, especially with the prevalence of bow skills these days. Uh, mirror arrow uh, 20 quality is a gem that you will get very very frequently from the divination card turn in uh, pretty much always they are going to be one chaos or even less than that earlier on in the league uh, however if you take a simple alteration orb and you come here and you change mirror arrow with one alt it'll switch to blink arrow now blink arrow is far more commonly used and you'll see that it's five to ten chaos each so this is obviously not going to break the bank However, this can be done very early on. Obviously, it's almost instant and only costs a alteration orb. So that is strategy number three. 
Strategy number four, we're going to take Barracks Respite, Barracks Pass, and Barracks Grip. One Chaos. One Chaos. Four Chaos. Three of those combined will make the Taming. And you can see 10, 15, 25 Chaos. Earlier on in the league, the Taming is very, very popular. Uh, it's not necessarily an endgame ring. Uh, but it is, it, it has the all res, the elemental damage, shock res ignite, um, you know, a lot of flat damage. It, it's, it's quite, quite useful early on. Um, and there are divination cards to feed into it. Uh, even right now though, we saw there that, uh, it was 10 to 15 C, uh, you know, that's two or three times your money. Okay. So there's a uh, method number four taming, uh, method number five. I've talked about this one in the past and it, it still continues to work. Um, uh, all we're going to do here is buy Victorious Fate, uh, Ignomious Fate, Will of Chaos, and Deadly End. Uh, specifically right now, 9 Chaos, 10 Chaos, 18 Chaos, so that's 19, 37, and 150. That is 187 Chaos. We assemble them like so. Boom. Power of Ordeals, 1.2 Divines. That is... Three hundred and thirty uh, chaos, and it was minus one hundred and eighty-seven. One hundred and forty-three chaos profit to assemble a map. There we go. There it is again. All right. So that's method number five. Uh, method number six. I did a video on this one as well, <clears throat> but just to reiterate, in case people miss it, uh, you don't have to do this with GCP. You can either uh, buy a level twenty uh, gem and then simply use one GCP on it. Uh, to make it level one quality, uh, sorry, level one with 20 quality, or you can try and find one uh, on the trade site that is being sold for, uh, you know, three or four chaos each for like, you know, 17 or 16 quality, and then just use a couple of GCP. I'm just simply doing it like this because, uh, you know, for the sake of the video, you can buy any gem you want from Lily. It'll always be level one, and I had a lot of GCP lying around. But regardless, all it takes is second wind support, uh, discharge. And Conk Effect, all of them level 1, uh, and they need to be 20 quality as well. From there, we simply take 1, 2, 3, bada boom, and we get the Recipe for Endless Misery. <clears throat> uh, these can be quite expensive. I know that the market's a bit flooded on them now uh, because of the uh, video I released recently. Um, however, you can see, uh, you know, e even with a flooded market, uh, there's still not a single... Um, there is still not a single Corrupted Blood uh, one online, and if you go search offline, there are nine Divines each. So, again, we, we, we can spend probably 10 to 15 Chaos. Uh, prior to the video I released again just about a week ago, so this market has been flooded a little bit. Um, it would be, they, these were upwards of 195 to 250 Chaos each. Uh, you can see now that they've dropped in price. Uh, but again, that's largely due to the fact that uh, there are 42 of them online. When I was doing it previously, they wrote four or five. So don't do this right now, but do check that out in League. Discharge is somewhat of a niche skill, so don't do this in abundance. Um, but, you know, if you do find, like, a discharge gem that's, you know, 18 quality or second gem, uh, so, <clears throat> sorry, second wind gem, uh, rather than using it for a GCP recipe, uh, consider doing this. And again, even though they are super cheap, always opportunities exist. The more steps removed something is from its end state, the bigger the margin typically will be. So simply using a, a Vol Orb on this, again, it's not it's not great odds, but even something like non-damaging ailments could add a great deal of value. Uh, you can see here I got a Corrupted Blood one. Um, as well, you can get the... Uh, uh, well, I'm sorry, I can't remember where I left it. However, there's also the, the one that has um, uh, the uh, Reservation of Mana Efficiency that, that's also very good. Uh, so e even if the market does get tampered down on those, check that out. So that's uh, how many methods have we done now? So we got method one, two, three, four, five. That's six methods down. All right, method number seven. Here we go. Similar to the um, Endless Misery one, this is a recipe for Dead Reckoning. Uh, minion, gem, uh, minion skills obviously are quite popular, especially early on in leagues. Uh, and this is a little bit less known recipe, I think. Then uh, Endless Misery. Uh, this is new of this league, so not a lot of people know this yet. Um, what you need here is a gem type, or sorry, a wand uh, of every rarity. So you can see here we've got Tornado Wand with Unique, Rare, Magic, and uh, Normal. Um, and then also a Summon Skeletons with 20 quality. So we're going to take all four of those. Take that over to the vendor here.
and bada boom. 45 chaos. Now you can do that. It's simply early on. You can do this with a, a life sprig, right? And you just get the same, um, and you can get the one bases from, uh, uh, the vendors in town even, you know, and just use a transmute and alchemy orb, uh, and then just have the one unique version. If you can't find unique ones, especially early on, um, you can just go ahead and do the, uh, right here, the wand with a Fenimal Scrabbler and create a unique wand and then go with it from there. If you're at a very low level in your bestiary, it will be limited in its options. Um, there we go. So there's a uh, version number eight or method number eight, rather, uh, no method number nine. What we're going to want to do for this one is grab a replica bitter dream these were uh 10 chaos five chaos each okay uh then we're going to get a fire pen cold pen and lightning pen 20 level 20 with the uh, they don't need to have quality on them just level 20 and then you go and you take all three of those now similar to the other bitter dream you're going to get these other jewels that are not really useful but you'll see here elemental penetration shows up and this is actually the only way to get this gem now if we take a look elemental pen 95 chaos and that was four chaos times uh, three, 12 plus five. That costs 17 C. And there we go, 95 C. If you level and quality this up, I'm just doing that. I wouldn't suggest doing this yourself. I'm just seeing for testing sake. Yeah, 2020, we're talking about, uh, you can even get upwards of a divine here. Um, and if you corrupt it, uh, you can get, ooh, I think there are about a couple divines each. Um, sorry, again, I didn't prepare the specifics of this too much, but we'll move on just so I don't waste any time here. Uh, but yes, these are quite rare as well. One thing to, uh, is worth mentioning as well, uh, there actually is an alternate quality on this. There's only one of them. Uh, and rather than having supported skills, you'll increase elemental damage. It gives you 40% uh, increased effect of ailments uh, by supported skills. Uh, because there's only other one alt, one alt quality, uh, and the only way to make this gem is through the, the recipe that I just showed you. Um, if you use a secondary regrading lens, uh, you'll have one of the only ones on the market. And very, very frequently, uh, if a secondary regrading lens, let's say, was, uh, you know, one divine. Let's see here. Actually, let's not, no need to speak in the abstract. Uh, gem quality type, any alternate. Not even a single one online. There are them. Two of them in the entire league. Two divines and nine divines. And they were posted a month, two months ago. Now, this isn't, again, this is not going to be one of those items that uh, hundreds and hundreds of people are clamoring over. But again, the fact that there isn't even a single one in the market right now, uh, you know, uh, I think speaks volumes of the fact that, you know, Again, even if it is a niche item, if there's not a single one available, you can provide that. Now, this is obviously because this can only be made with a regrading lens. You don't have to really worry about it. Uh, you know, it, it, <clears throat> like, for example, in Heist, uh, often it won't make sense to use a regrading lens because the actual gem can just be bought by itself um, for much cheaper. Uh, but with this, because this cannot drop naturally, it's always going to be done on a cost basis. So you can see that when we just look there on the trade site, one of them was actually a little bit cheaper um then the regrading lens is right now but that's because it was posted a month and a half ago or two months ago at the time the regrading lens would have been commiserate with that and there would have been a healthy margin of profit uh given the fact it has to be made through those steps you are not going to risk ever losing money by using the secondary regrading lens there unless it takes you a very long time to sell it which it typically will not be so that's method number nine guys all right and again, just to, to demonstrate one more time, uh, we're getting a cold pen, fire pen, and lightning pen with a replica bitter dream. One, two, three, four. And there's the Ellie pen right there. All right. So that was nine methods down. Okay, now <clears throat> method number 10. This is actually one that you can do super early in the league. I wouldn't really recommend doing it in later stages of the league. Uh, but again, one of those questions I'm often asked, how do I make currency early on? And uh, I've actually been doing this straight up for like nine years now. Uh, and it always crushes it early league. Um, chaos recipe. I know a lot of people are against doing that uh, early on in maps. 
um, you know, because they want to rush their content. I take a bit of a different approach um, and I like to invest into things that appreciate rapidly. Uh, for example, you can buy certain things for two to three chaos each that within a couple of days will be, you know, 75 chaos or a divine even in some cases. Um, and so in, in a situation like that, where you're not looking at a chaos recipe as if it's worth two chaos, you're looking at it as a uh, each chaos recipe is worth a divine in two days. Um, and so if you're trying to get chaos recipes done, usually the thing that you're going to bottleneck with are amulets and rings. Uh, and this is a really good way to deal with that, as well as it's a, a good way for you to actually craft your own items too, especially early on if, if you're using rares um, and you just need things like resistances. So what you're going to do here uh, is you're just going to actually just go to any vendor. Um, you want to have make sure it's above item level 60. Uh, so I believe it's Highgate. It might be uh, Act 5 that you need to do this in. But any vendor in town, uh, and we're going to get a single stat uh, amulet. So either just strength, just uh, dex, or just um intelligence so an amber or a lapis or a uh, jade and then we're going to use an orb of alchemy on each one well you can also use a orb of binding but early on especially day one two in the league these are quite a bit more valuable than elks uh so i de recommend using an alchemy now you can check them out to see what the mods are no good that's all right what we're going to then do uh, first of all, you could either just use these for the identified chaos recipe. I typically tend to do an unidentified chaos recipe because uh, A, you get double the amount of chaos and B, um, the low level mods usually are not very good, right? If you're doing something with item level 61, 62, it's not like you can roll a very good item anyways in most cases. So we're going to try and get an unidentified one here. Uh, and the way of doing that, again, is to make them both rare. One, two, use one herb of transmute and you will be given a combination of uh, the two types, so we have int and dex, we will be given uh, whatever the lowest rarity is. So if they're both rare, you'll get rare. If one is magic and one is rare, you'll get magic. Uh, but yes, a combination of those two with the same item level. And again, the item level will be the same with the lowest item involved. So if, if one was say 61 and one was 67, it would be 61. Uh, and you can see there, and that's a good way to get uh, identi unidentified things for the, the uh, chaos recipe. Uh, or again, you can just identify them yourself, see if it's good or not and uh, move on from there. <clears throat> Let's see. So, you need help with um, buh, buh, buh. yeah, so that, that's what, there's that one. Uh, that's method uh, number number 10 or nine. And uh, uh, next one we're gonna do here too. Uh, sorry, I'll turn off the uh, alert there. Next thing we're gonna do here, uh, similar to that one, um, except uh, this is actually just a way to scour these for free basically. So if you want to, um, Early on in the league, if you want to get a good amulet and you need a rare amulet, uh, but you don't want to pay for scours because scours are very, very expensive early on, uh, especially because chance orbs are at very high value for the first couple of days because chance orbs are used to uh, purchase maps from Kyrak and from um, uh, purchase contracts uh, in Heist. Uh, so, uh, and often chance orbs are just turned into scours. The two prices tend to be quite interlocked. Um, so what, what we're going to look at here is you take a rare amulet, and then you take any gem type, so sorry, uh, any gem quality or level, uh, one of each color. So a red, green, and a blue with that amulet, and it will give you a scoured clean onyx every time. So you can see there, um, onyx amulet, you go ahead, pop that on. Uh, this is especially easy once you have Lily, because you can just literally sit there in your hideout doing this over and over. Like red, green. Blue. And there we go. We get a clean version again. So that's just the, basically a way that you can scour these amulets if you actually want to just kind of craft them. Now, again, we're talking very early league uh, situation there. Obviously, later on, this is not going to be something that's worth the time. Um, but that's a way to do that as well. Uh, or if you just want a better base, you can do this to uh, improve your bases too. Uh, okay, so then another way, sir, sim similar in that line, um, we won't even count these as a different strategy. Uh, similar to that, though, uh, if we want to get uh, an unidentified ring for the Chaos Recipe early on, uh, take a two stone. You can, again, buy these in town. Uh, you need to get one. So uh, the colors of the uh, jewels here, so uh, blue and red, orange and blue, and red and orange, one of each one. And based on the rarity, the lowest rarity of and the lowest item level of the three rings, you will get. Uh, so if they're all rare, again, it'll come out rare. Uh, and whatever the lowest item level is of the ring will be the one you get. And we'll get a prismatic ring, and that's a way that you can get an unidentified ring recipe, or just to do it over and over again. Uh, and to give you an example here, we can see that uh, 
These were all just purchased at a vendor, similar to what I just did, but you can see normal, normal, and one of them is magic. One, two, three. Uh, it will come out normal. Again, the lowest rarity of the three involved. Um, so that's a, that's a good way to build up some chaos early on. And again, uh, especially if you're doing them unidentified, a couple of chaos can go a long way. Uh, I'll elaborate on that a little bit further here. So uh, we'll, we'll just count that as one method. I think that was uh, method number 10 or maybe, maybe 11. To be honest, I've lost count. Um, all right, but here's another one we're going to do. Uh, and this one works all the way throughout the league. Uh, these all work all the way throughout the league, but, it, you know, something that's profitable from what costing one chaos, giving you five chaos back, probably not something you're going to be too concerned about uh, come, you know, 60 days into the league or whatever. Uh, but even though the fact it is a 500% return, uh, this is something, though, that is just, it's always worth it. Uh, and it's kind of crazy to me, and it's actually frustrating sometimes because of how often I beast crap. Anyways, what we're going to do here um when we look at all these are the bosses of the bestiary we've got uh feral's den sack calls roost creation creation's cove etc uh these are the aspects that you can actually craft onto the gear so uh, if you want to be able to use the aspect similar to this you actually have to have an aspect on one of the pieces of gear uh the way that you get the aspect is by killing the boss now if we take a look here feral first of the planes 95 chaos uh actually yesterday these were upwards of a, of a divine each um, and that is feral, right? So the only way to get feral first of the planes is by killing Fer uh, Ferric Tiger Alpha in Feral's Den. Now, if we look here, Ferric Tiger Alpha is 17 chaos. Now, what's crazy about that is that this not only guarantees this, but you also get one of the bestiary items or bestiary uniques, which includes Feral's Fur, which are a divine each. So by paying 10 chaos, you can get a seven to one return simply by killing a boss that takes 30 seconds uh the fight like again is literally a 30 second fight um and then obviously it's not 100 percent on this there are five items but even if you kill one in ten uh you're going to be making like 20 times your money this exists pretty much always throughout the league uh, and it's it's the case for all of the bosses uh however ferals is you know one of the ones that is uh, uh most commonly used so i would definitely check that out um this is such a good thing to do um you know, you can sell the beast or you can beast craft for them. People will pay for them. Beast crafting in general, there's a lot of uh, opportunities there to make money because people tend to be fairly ignorant about uh, the whole process. It does have its slew of problems, though. Um, so anyways, yeah, definitely check that one out. So method number 11 or 12, I can't remember. Let's say it's method number 11. All right, next one. Super simple here, guys. Uh, this is a new addition this league. What we're going to be looking at here is Force Leveling Awakened Gems. Here we're going to look at Awakened Focus, level 1, 90 Chaos. Here is an Awakened Focus, level 5, 1 Divine. That is a difference of uh, 90 Chaos to 1 Divine. Oops, sorry, this one was corrupted. we got to move the corruption thing. 1.2 Divine, sorry, 1.2 to 1.4. So we're talking about 330 Chaos, roughly. Um, that's a margin of 240 Chaos. Now, what, what we're going to be looking for here <clears throat> is a Wild Bramble back. Uh, these cost 20 Chaos each. Um, upwards right now in the league, they're 30 chaos. <clears throat> Earlier on, they were only at 20. And uh, since an awakened gem has five levels, you only need four beasts. That means for, to get from level one to level five uh, is going to cost you 80 chaos, or if you do it right now, 120 chaos. But even if you do it right now, again, 90 C versus 1.4 divines. So that means uh, we would be spending 90 plus 120, that's 210 chaos, and you're going to be getting 150, 160 C for something that will take you um, probably about 45 seconds to do. On top of that, you can then uh, use a uh, Vol Orb on it. Uh, you can even double corrupt these. I, I don't think it's worth double corrupting them in Temple uh, unless they are a much higher value. <clears throat> but because Awakened Gems have the same quality type as a Superior Gem, typically uh, the quality is not too important. Um, and if a gem goes minus a level, you can simply re-level it. Uh, so the only negative thing that you can have uh, in terms of vol orbing one of these is minus quality. Minus level is annoying, but it, it doesn't have a long-term detriment. Um, and the minus quality usually will only take about 10 or 15% off the sale price if it were clean. However, if you get a level 6 one, you can see here, 4 divines, 5 divines, right? Uh, and that's from one that, that is 1 divine. Or if you get one that has, um, you know, up, up quality, it'll be 20 or 30% more. 
So given that they're equal weightings, it's a one in eight occurrence for it to lose quality. Uh, it's But you've got a two in eight occurrence for it to go positive. The one in eight occurrence is one where you lose, let's say 10%, but the other one in eight occurrence, the plus one level, uh, is one where you gain 400%. And then you also have another one where you gain about 20%. So the plus quality and minus quality kind of offset each other. Uh, the minus level and the plus level, um, minus level really honestly has almost no value lost since you can just re-level it. And the plus level gives a huge, huge, huge boon. Uh, and again, the name of this beast is Wild Bramble Jack, or Wild Bramble Back, sorry. And you can see here, uh, increase the level of a non-corrupted Awakened Gem by one. Very easy to do. It does also work on exceptional gems. You can use it on uh, Awakened Enhance and Awakened Empower. The more expensive a gem is, by the way, guys, um, the higher the margin is going to be. So if we take a look at um, something like an Awakened uh, Enhance, uh, look at that. Level 1 is 26 divines, and level 4 is 28 divines. So that only required 3 beasts, right? So that's a 90 chaos you have to spend, but there's a 2 divine difference. Um, this is that exists all the time with uh, you know, Awaken GMP, Spell Echo, etc. Um, uh, you know, but the Awaken Gems, uh, sorry, the exceptional Awaken Gems in particular. Another really good one I've noticed too is uh, Awaken to increase area of effect. We can see here a uh, level one is 1.1 divines, but a level five is 2.4 divines. So, uh, you know, again, it's going to be used four times. So, right now it's 30 chaos each, 120 C. Uh, and you are getting 1.2 divines, which is, um, what, 320? So you're making 200 chaos, um, again, for, for something that takes about 45 seconds. All right, so that's method uh, number 12. Uh, method number 13. Uh, and this is one that I love doing, and I've been talking about this one for a few leagues, um, but it is so easy to do, uh, and uh, it is just a great deal of fun. Uh, because of uh, you know the potential outcomes you can get. So what we're going to do here is we're going to get an item level 85, uh, typically a level 85 two-tone pair of boots or fugitive boots. Um, you can do it with any base type really, but just a valuable boot type. Um, this can obviously be done on other gems as well or other base types, sorry, uh, like gear slots. It doesn't have to be boots, but specifically with today with boots, I'm going to demonstrate that. Uh, early on in leagues, this is incredibly, incredibly, incredibly lucrative. Um, so <clears throat> veiled chaos orbs in the first week are going to be like one to two chaos each. Uh, there are uh, low key, by the way, a lot of people don't really realize this or take it in rather than doing uh, June missions early on. One of the ways that I get a leg up on everyone is by getting all of the crafts that are June required. Um, and aside from the ones that are uh, leader specific, so, uh, you know, uh, vegans, um, hits cannot be evaded. Camarias shatter plus crit, um, you know, those specific ones uh, that are tied to or Elrion's minus mana, all the other ones can be done by simply taking a one chaos veiled chaos orb, going like this, and then simply unveiling. Um, and this is literally a way that you can, uh, you can get all of your unveils done. Uh, you can put items up that have the craft yourself, or you can, uh, you know, you can sell them. Um, obviously, I don't have access to TFT anymore, but... Uh, you know, you can you can do the beach or the boss uh, crafting services on TFT. So that by itself makes this worthwhile. But what we're going to be focusing on specifically uh, is we just want to use a veil chaos orb until we get a prefix. Uh, so you can see here we've got a prefix. As long as movement speed is not rolled on the boots already, and if it is, so if I did this right here, so we can see we're unveiling a prefix. If if the uh, if there was a pre-existing move speed, um, either just use a veiled chaos orb again or um trying to null it off or do prefix to suffix with the beastcraft because we want to get the move speed here um if we go ahead and block mana we'll be guaranteed that okay so now we're going to be guaranteed to get move speed there it is and we're going to remove the craft and this is where the fun part happens now we can see here as well this one has three suffixes which is good if it has two suffixes that's fine just block the uh, the third suffix we're gonna think we're then gonna take a redeemer's exalted orb okay and we want to be using that to go for a prefix um and what we're trying to hit here is elusive on hit if we end up hitting elusive no we did not and but that's no big deal um the chance to get elusive i believe is about one in eight um it might be a little bit higher sorry i don't, I don't have the i should have looked this up before the video i apologize uh, I think it's about one in eight, might be one in ten. Uh, but either way, what's great about this is that um, it doesn't matter because if you do not hit elusive, 
you'll be able to see item level 86, pair of two tone boots, are 80 chaos, 100 chaos, 150 chaos. And that's right now, at the beginning of the league, this is, they're like a divine or two divines each sometimes. Um, and how much is a Redeemer's Orb? 30 chaos. And again, how much is 86? 100 chaos, 80 to 100 chaos. So uh, you literally cannot lose. Now, if you do hit elusive here, right? So that means you would have elusive plus um, you would have uh, elusive plus you'd have move speed and onslaught. Uh, they'd be redeeming two tones. Take a look here. And again, this, this works right now as well. Uh, so we've got move speed. We've got... Ooh, 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 where's the onslaught there? I don't know why that's not showing up. But either way... Chance to get elusive on critical strike. And look at that, 13 divines. <laughs> so that's that's a bit of a, a stretch, but regardless, if you do hit the elusive, your upside is going to be um, you know, 10x multiplier or something like that. So let's say you spend 40k. Like again, you can do this literally in week one. It'll be about 40 chaos for a redeeming orb. The two-tone pair of boots uh will be usually about uh, five or ten C each, um, maybe upwards of 20 uh, at most for the base type, but usually five or ten. Uh, 40 chaos for the redeeming orb, one chaos each for the veiled chaos orbs. Um, what you're going, what you're going for is the uh, just to unveil a prefix, get the move speed. Um, it'll either be with onslaught, chill, or uh, the double move speed. You can uh, bench life on there, it's 70 uh, 70 flat life, and then you get the elusive. Uh, you're going to be talking about four or five divines in the first week, uh, and that'll last up until about eight weeks in. Not even eight weeks, but seven eight weeks in, it'll those margins will exist. Uh, they still do exist right now, but uh, again, at this stage in the league, people are typically going to want elevated items more so. Um, now, uh, if you do, if you don't hit it, as we did not there, have no fear, and you do want to craft it, no problem. We're then just going to come here, and we're going to reforge crit, and what do you know? You're guaranteed it. It's the only crit mod that exists on boots. So all you have to do here uh, is just basically do reforge crit until you get, um, you know, move speed or life. And well, look at that. We have onslaught on kill there too. And we've got life. So you can either bench, you can just bench it on move speed if you wanted to, or you could uh, just try to annul it. And uh, oh, look at that, we removed the life. Wonderful. Um, and then, yeah, so this has already got the onslaught on kill. We could even try and elevate this if we wanted to. Uh, in this situation, it would actually be good either way. Having either elevated onslaught or elevated elusive is a killer. So um, both of those would work fine. But here you would just, again, you can try and get the um, move speed by doing, there we go. Uh, you could then do uh, prefixes can't be changed and uh, put on a veiled chaos orb um, and then bench life and you're good to go. Uh, again, you don't necessarily want to, uh, you don't necessarily have to use the prefix. Um, prefixes can't be changed. You could just do it with a veiled chaos orb um, and you can always do prefixes can't be changed once you have life and the move speed on there and then it'll guarantee the third prefix being elusive. So there's lots of different ways that that can be uh, malleable and, and, and changed. Uh, but the key thing to take away here is that um, if you get, by the way, you don't have to use a Veil of Chaos Orb. You can just use um, a life essence or a move speed essence. Um, <clears throat> and that works just as fine. Uh, it's just obviously there's a much higher value in Veil of Chaos Orbs. And specifically at the beginning of the league, this is a really good way to get your, uh, your, um, your Veiled mods un unidentified. And they're super, super, super cheap every league. Now, um, yeah, that's for elusive. Now, the next thing we're going to take a look at in a similar vein uh, is, is going to be, so that's, sorry, that was method number 13, uh, I believe. 12, 13, no, method number 13. Now, uh, the similar one here, what we're going to be doing is just grabbing a good pair of, uh, any good strong base type, and we're going to be reforging the influence. So here, okay, let's say it's Fugitive Boots, um, there, I just threw on a Warlord's Orb. We're not even going to concern ourselves with that. Then we're going to, the Warlord's Orb is 30 chaos each, right? 
uh what we're just going to do 1000 life force especially early on um you can get these for 15,000 to one uh and you're just going to do the reforge uh this is a good way to get shapers on things like shapers or elders on things like fugitive boots uh, because obviously there's no uh, conquerors exalted or for those um and uh, they do have very valuable mods on them <clears throat> um and hunters is specifically is the one that i would be typically looking for early on uh you can see here fugitive boots hunter i86 look at that four divines each guys four divines each because and the reason for that is that a hunter's exalted orb is you know 100 100 chaos one to three divines whereas you know a redeemer's chaos orb is 30 chaos uh or um, same with a uh, a warlord's one and the primal life force it's only a thousand primal life force for each one uh again you can get shapers or elders which is the only way really to get them because it's very unlikely to get item level 86 fugitive boots that drop with elder it's not impossible but there's just not a ton of them um and this is a way that you can basically force them right um and once you get uh you, once you get the hunters on there, you can either just sell the base outright, or you can try to uh, hit Tailwind, and then you can even just awaken, um, you know, a shitty pair of, uh, just like a, a shitty pair of boots that has uh, Elusive on it or Onslaught. Get that on there. Uh, the Reforge is great. There are tons of different ways in which this is profitable. I won't go over them, um, but just again, that tech is very, very, very strong. Uh, you're just going to look for the cheapest Warlord's Orb, and then you're just going to use the uh, the Life Force. The Primal Life Force typically too is the cheapest one. This league, even still at this point, are 10,501. I believe earlier on in the league, they were like 21,000 to one. Um, so you, again, you can get 20 reforges uh, from uh, one divine. So, um, and again, the boots are four divines at this point. Um, so yeah, there's method number uh, 13. Um, another good thing to look at for those, by the way, are Stygian uh, belts. Uh, so there's another way to make some money. <clears throat> okay, this is a, a really cool one here. This is primarily going to be used with ES gear and ward gear. Uh, but what we're going to be doing here is be looking for things that have a 100% um, base damage effect, or sorry, base value. So you see here, items have base percentile. And what that means when you hold alt, you'll see here that ward has a range of 102 to 117. Same thing happens for all defense types, uh, but typically uh, ward and ES are ones that are going to be looking to min max that to the absolute highest, um, especially ward. Uh, so here you see it's 117 out of 117. The only thing, again, we're looking for here is the tier one base um, at an appropriate item level with a base percentile of 100. I paid 20 chaos for these ones. Uh, boo, boo, boo. Um, 35 chaos for 83. Yeah, it looks like 85 ones went up to a divine. Uh, I did actually pay 20 uh, chaos for this one and 50 chaos for this one um again earlier on in the league though people are not going to be paying attention to this at all like, like again the first week people do not pay attention to this kind of thing you can get these for two to three chaos for four chaos uh especially es things sort boots whatever uh it can be done with helmets and stuff as well it's not exclusive to boots um but yes yeah, so you're looking for 100 percent damage or uh, base effectiveness uh what we're then going to do is uh, get some perfect fossils or you can do this through um betrayal And we just want to get, uh, I, I, I'm for the purpose of the video's length, I'm not even going to bother looking at the rules here. Uh, some of these are actually pretty good, though. Uh, and we just want to get 30 quality. There we go. All right, after we get the 30 quality, uh, what you can do now, again, for ward boots, you're not going to do this because we're going to be using the Eldritch for them. Um, but another thing you can do on these um, is uh, you can put on um, the, what's the name of it again? Boop, boop, boop. There we go. Sorry, Gilded Fossil. Uh, you can put on the Gilded Fossil. Um, and it'll give it that implicit for this specifically for what we're doing here. This is not going to matter because we're going to be using Eldritch implicits, uh, but that does work there as well. Um, you can also get the white sockets, whatever it is. But what's important right now is the 30 quality and the fact that it is um, 
uh, 100% base percentile. Okay, um, and then from there, what you're gonna do uh, is grab uh, Eldritch and uh, Eldritch currency. Uh, it doesn't matter what you want. Uh, again, for, for these specifically, uh, I'm just using the cheapest ones just to illustrate the, the tech here. Uh, so we got cooldown. I'm not sure, Brittle Ground. Okay, so we got cooldown, Brittle Ground. Let's say that these are better versions. Um, now, what's really cool here is the Fractured Fossil. We're going to take a Fractured Fossil, and we're going to take a Chaotic Resonator, and we are actually going to be able to kind of pseudo-dupe these. Um, now, what's really cool about this is that there's always... Fenimal Plagued Arachnids uh, are also able to split items. However, uh, Fenimal Plagued Arachnids cannot be used with Eldritch Currency. Now, the difference between them is that a Fenimal Plague Arachnid will split the mods into two, whereas a uh, Fracturing uh, uh, Fossil like this, where it creates a split copy, uh, it will reforge the item, and then it will recreate the base. So you can see here, if we, if we were to use a Fenimal Plague Arachnid and we had not put these implicits on, it would uh, split this into one two, two items. One would have two mods and one would have three. When we use this Fracturing Fossil here, you'll see it created a brand new item that rolled decently well, actually. <laughs> Lucky us. Um, and uh, it has the exact same mods, but we also get to keep the Eldritch Implicits. So what's really, really uh, valuable here is that you can take something where there's a huge reliance on the uh, base value, uh, the quality, and you can also put on, again, you could put like exceptional and perfect um, Eldritch things on here. And if we just look here now, so just for Runic Sabatons, we're just going to look at the base item, base percentile, and... Look at that. This is the only mod we're looking up. 100% percentile uh, with 5% cooldown recovery rate. Even when you get rid of this, they're one divine each, right? If we then look at our mods here uh, on the actual item where we uh, factor in, uh, let's say, the ward. Uh huh. And there you go. Look at that. Six divines each. Right, so what do we spend there? You know, again, the the, the <clears throat> Eldritch currency typically you're going to want to use a higher version of this, but just to get the two bases on there uh, can be very, very, very valuable in of itself. And uh, it's a, you know, what's great about it too, uh, aside from the fact you know you do obviously get to keep the bases, um, but uh, you are able to get those implicits on there. Um, so yeah, what you're going to be looking for again, this is really best done with ward gear and with ES gear because they're going to want to min max, uh, that more, more so than our armor and evasion defense types are. Um, but you're going to want to get as high of a base uh, armor value. You're going to want to get 30 quality. Uh, and if you are going to Eldritch craft them, um, try to get a, a really strong implicit on there. Uh, then you can use, again, if you are using the Eldritch currency, you want to use a fracturing fossil to get a duped pair of the same pair of boots um, and again when you see here we spent uh you know only uh was 20 or what is it 15 uh perfect fossils that's about half a divine uh we paid 20 chaos for the base and then we paid uh maybe 20 chaos for eldritch currency uh and so we're talking about uh, 200 c roughly uh oh and the fracturing fossil uh so let's say 225 chaos total and we get two base types that are, this is saying 10 divines each. And that's, that's actually only even showing a 98% percentile. Again, five, six divines, right? Like, and then we got two of those. That's 10 divines right there. These are incredibly easy to roll after that. I'll cover that in another video maybe. But um, 200 chaos, 10 divine return, fucking obscene. Really, really, really strong thing to do there. Uh, ward gear is uh, pretty nuts, guys. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie. Uh, very easy to make pairs of boots like these. You can see the, the, the dollar value of these. This is one of the things I do very frequently. Um, you can see there are 30 quality, 117 ward on the base side of it. Uh, we've got that 15 divines, five divines, whatever. 
Um, so you can do this with, again, ES gear, Blizzard crowns, whatever it is. Uh, it doesn't, again, it, does, it doesn't even have to be on items that have um, just a very high defense type. Things like Blizzard crowns or rarer bases. So, you know, something that's got a high space or, um, uh, you know, a ritual base or like that, that just isn't a part of a normal draw pool. It's a good way to create additional bases. By the way, it also works with six links. Um, so you can get uh, a base six link and you can dupe it like this and get two six links very good early on, uh, especially if you want to make, uh, uh, you know, corruptions or whatever. I'll cover that in a different video. Um, that's method number 15 right there, guys. Um, and as a bonus, um, let's pop that back in. But again, yeah, so what we're looking on there is duping the bases. Uh, it can be done for a variety of things, ES gear, ward gear, uh, stuff with good sockets, whatever it is. Sorry, this video is going longer than I, I had hoped, uh, but here's here's another quick bonus one too. This is especially good early on. Um, when, if you do this the first three to five days of a league, uh, the collective return on one of these uh, can be somewhere, you know, about one to two divines every time you do this. Uh, very, very easy to do. All we need is 60 rings. They have to 60 unique rings, any any kind of combination. Obviously, you would want to use cheap ones generally. It does not matter if they are corrupted or not, as long as they are still unique. And that's going to give you a lore week. And item level does not matter. And lore weave, uh, lore weave, you can see there, one of the unique mods is that it always has six sockets. Uh, it's got a ton of variants after, but these are incredibly valuable early on in the league um, because they give crit, evasion, rarity, life, mana, attributes, max res, elemental damage, fizz damage attacks. Plus, what's a great addition to these now uh, is the fact that you can simply use them. Oh my god, we hit plus one gems. <laughs> All right, well, it's, it's on here first, kids. Anyways, my point was there. Uh, <laughs> the point I was going to make there is that it's super easy to make six links now um, because you could simply use tainted currency like that. There we go. Now we made it a five link. What do you know? And the 10 divines. Uh, and that's as a five link. So, and that cost us 60 unique rings. Um, <laughs> I can't believe that just happened live. Anyways, guys, this is uh, this is something you can do um, literally like on day one of a league, uh, no problem at all. Um, and uh, there's another part of this I can show you real quick here. Uh, one of the ways to get uh, early on to get uh, lots of unique rings. Uh, first of all, you th there's going to be the trade set will be flooded with them. At most, you'll pay um, sixty alks, maybe one hundred and twenty alks. Uh, never more than 60 chaos to get this made. Uh, for the first few days, they sell the, uh, for, you know, one to three divines. Um, and again, if you can get them six length, they're like five or six divines. Uh, and the easy way to do that, as I just showed you there, because it's always six, uh, because it's always going to be a six socketed already, uh, you just uh, go to the bench, make it a four link, um, and then you use a tainted fuse until it hits six. Uh, -boo. And the yeah, sorry, the easy way to get that is right here. This is the Ferric Flame Hellion Alpha. And what does that do? Bestiary. Bada boom, bada bing. This is the, one of the ones that will start dropping at very early levels. And it's this one right here. Create a unique ring. Uh, in general, this is also another method I use early on. Um, because there's so many uniques that are worth like quite a bit early. Uh, you'll, you notice that you get Einhar as soon as you go into Act 2. Uh, Einhar will show up. I actually usually repeat that a couple of times just to get the, the rare beast kills. And then I'll go and create a couple of unique items. And, you know, you can sell things like a Quill Rain um, or a Gold Rim or sorry, a Gold Rim and whatever. Um, you can get like three or four Chaos for those early on. Three or four Chaos, like an hour into the league, I can turn into a Divine within 20 minutes, no problem. Uh, and I can explain that in another video. But that's a way to get some of that early currency going. Um, and again, if you want to create your own rings to help build up towards that lore weave, um, you can do it through the bestiary right there. And then you can six link it yourself afterwards. Um, and here's the final. So that was what number 16 now number 17. Uh, this is another one that's super super easy for this one All you're gonna do is find uh, jewels that have a good fracture on them. So on this one um, Because jewels regular jewels they can drop uh, Perfect at any item level. There are no tiers of the mods. 
The mods do have weightings, but they don't have item level requirements because there are no tiers. So that means if you can get a good fracture, so in this case, 3% mana reservation of skills, what we're going to do is just reforge life. Uh, by the way, I was buying these for 5 to 20 chaos um, for three quarters of the league. Um, and then something that has a super high value, like life, if we go and look for a 3% reservation with life on it, um, two divines, boom. And like literally just for having those two mods. And because, uh, you know, th there is a pretty limited amount of mods on here, uh, in the reforged life, you're going to be able to get, uh, you know, a hundred or how much it is, uh, 100, 150 of these, <laughs> 150 reforges per divine right now. And early on in the league, it's about, uh, uh, 300 reforges for a divine. So you can just literally do this looking for something like life. There we go. Life attack speed. Uh, this is the same jewel here. Um, same thing again, reservation, uh, life is a bit more common on Viridians, uh, than it is on Cobalt. So it should show up more often. There you go. Life attack speed reservation. Doesn't even exist. All right. How about that? Two divines. Okay. I paid 40 chaos for that one. Very easy to do. It takes five seconds. These things sell very quickly, very easily, and they tend to get more expensive as the league goes on. People are just very naive about that. All right, guys. Uh, fuck, the video's still 51 minutes. I'm really sorry, but hopefully it was packed enough that you guys got a lot out of it. There it is. 15 different methods, guys. Each one of these in themselves only takes a couple of minutes each. Um, really sorry about the duration of the video. I try to keep this brief. I guess it's not a skill set I have. Um, I did put a lot of work into preparing this, but uh, anyways, 15 different methods. Maybe the next time I'll just do five. And make it the video shorter right hope you guys enjoy let me know if you have any questions and let me know if you guys like this i'll, I'll definitely keep up the format if so and uh, happy hunting out there exiles cheers